One of the good things about Earth is beverages. We don't have beverages like this, like here, like you have here that you suck through your face. That's really fun. I enjoy that about Earth. You know the thing, whatever your job is, you've probably experienced this. The thing when someone asks what you do, what do you do? Or what is your hobby? But what do you do for a living? And you tell them, and everyone has the same reaction. Everyone has the same comeback. But they all think they're the first person to have ever said it to you. My avatar was a stand-up comedian for years. And when you tell someone you're a stand-up comedian, they say one of two things. One, tell me something funny, which is, you know, no. Or equally as insufferable, uh, my friends think I should be a stand-up comedian, which is, you know, well, you shouldn't. You would not be good at that. But when you're an extra-dimensional being, the version of that is being asked about the pyramids. Please stop asking us about the pyramids. For the love of Christ, stop asking us about, don't worry about it. It's none of your business. You wouldn't understand it if we explained it to you. That's a civilization that doesn't exist anymore. You're in a new civilization that's a completely different thing, different kind of beings, different kind of technology, different whatever. Their stuff looks cool. That's what's left. It was all very cool. That just happened to get left behind in the, in the clearing out of the set, and you were all obsessed with it. There's a second you can get an extraterrestrial being onto the channel. You all ask the exact same question about the goddamn pyramids. It's none of your, don't worry. You have a lot of things to worry about. None of it's the pyramids. You got these bros gathering together in this kind of swarming intellectual soup pontificating over what the pyramids are. Don't, why don't you focus on how to process a feeling? Don't worry about the old set. It has nothing to do with you. Nothing, no, no code. You're not going to crack a code about a civilization that doesn't exist. You're connected to that civilization, sure, but the, you're not connected to the game. Don't worry about it. You have bigger fish to fry, gentlemen. Bigger, more other things. to. And listen, it's, it's grading. If I'm being honest, it's the second the channel opens. It's, What's up, parents? Don't ask me that again. Don't ask any of us. We hate it. We hate it. It's very hack. It's very hacky of you. And I hope for my own amusement that in 200 million years, when you have progressed to a finer frequency and your life's work becomes serving the baby aliens here in the incubator, and your job becomes helping them find themselves, I hope that something is left behind. I hope there's something left behind in the United States of America from this civilization. It's unlikely, since you're making most stuff out of like uh, cardboard, so it's unlikely to make it. But just, just one or two, just random just a, a Ross dress for less or a, a golden corral just still left standing for the baby aliens to just build an entire belief system around. To just sit around and barely start to wake up and then dedicate entire egregores to the golden corral and the meaning of the golden corral. And it's, in that civilization, they used to reincarnate inside the golden corral it's like no it was uh, it was a buffet and you wouldn't understand it because the new civilization's not it doesn't matter just
Cyrus. It would be different if you kept the pyramid stuff to yourselves, but you don't. You, you bring us into it. You could have some sort of weird LARPing fantasy bond with the pyramids all you want. Just leave us out of it. You talk to us about it like this has anything. We're like, he, like, we're trying to help you find the path inside of yourself. And you're like, what about this thing outside of myself? It's maddening. Gotten a lot of uh, correspondence from people wanting some insight into the void. We've talked about the void a little bit. And there are different versions of the void. There are intermittent voids that you all experience when you choose to or are forced to in this process shed a version of yourself and move into another version of yourself. So let's say you are a corporate whatever person and you decide you want to shed that version of you and pursue the more artistic version of you. You will experience when you quit that job kind of a death process and then kind of a intermission where you're afraid that you maybe shouldn't have killed off that character and maybe you can't do this thing and nothing really feels right and you're not immediately good at the new thing. And we call that living in the void. It can be pretty nihilistic. I can't remember if we've already talked about it here or not, but currently you are all living in a 10 year void. We like to call the, the liminal lobby. You are in a holding pattern somewhat. You are in a, a little simulation a little simulation inside of the simulation where you are cleaning the gook off of you. This, the, the point of the human evolution that you are currently in consciously is where you've been sucked out of that pod in the matrix, but you're still covered in the green slime from you can't do that on television. Uh, kids, you'll have to ask your parents what about that reference. Is you got to clean the gook off of you and start to eat some food and you know get some get some vitality back and and get your bearings you're now in the other thing but you don't know what to do in the other thing and you're all very antsy you're all very antsy for what is actually a very short period of time this void space this longer void space is only 10 years started in 2017. You're seven years into it. Some of you don't hop in until the last couple of years and you just absorb all of the work that everyone has done before you. But some of you have been here since 2017 and you're, you know, a, a little whiny about it. If I'm being honest and, and not paying attention to the amount of work that you've already done. So this has already been talked about here, but it bears repeating because you seem to be forgetting it. You have been deeply immersed in this matrix for tens of thousands of years. The last time that you came up for air and I'm defining coming up for air as remembering who you are and tuning in to all of your points of awareness. If you don't know what points of awareness is, go back and listen to the last transmission, 5D non-cult. You have been completely cut off. You have been playing a game and believing that you are the avatar in the game while rapid fire reincarnating at an insane pace for tens of thousands of years. And it takes a minute to recenter, to remember who you are, to get your bearings, to be able to move forward, and you're all already somehow complaining that you think you're not doing anything. You think you're not doing anything. And we think the problem with this is that you are defining quote unquote doing something with the conditioning of the last game you played. So we're going to explain some of the things that you are expected to be handling, to use the language of your last game, things that you were expected to be working on in the liminal lobby. And you tell me if you're not doing anything. The first item in the liminal lobby is to decondition. So this is uh, where your avatar has taken on the 
rules and the ideas and the concepts of the last game that you were playing and taken them into your identity and bought into the premise of the reality that you were living in. So this is where maybe you thought life was about work. Or this is where you you took on the idea that you're not doing enough. Or this is where you took on the idea that everything has to be rational and make sense. Or you took on the idea that you need physical proof for everything and that everything needs to be quantified through seeing, touching, tasting. Any of these sort of things. So you're, you're first... Not first as in in order, but one of the things that you should be doing is deconditioning ideas that are not generated within you or don't resonate with your body. So you know what conditioning is because you don't want to do it, but you're doing it because, quote unquote, that's the way it's done. That takes years. That takes years. Okay. Number two is you are deconstructing and then reconstructing. So deconstructing as in constructs, you personally have absorbed and internalized a lot of constructs from the former game, and you personally are releasing them. At the same time, your worldview is reframing for a new game and a new set of constructs. This is a a much shorter aspect of the reality, like the the 25,000-year cycle you're coming out of is about human evolution. The constructs are more about the rules of the immediate game you're about to go into. They don't matter, but they are good to know. So constructs of the previous reality, this is available. A bigger breakdown of this is available on the Patreon for free if you want to sign up for free and get it there. But here's Cliff Notes. The previous constructs, constructs also parameters, Rules of the game. Let's say you go in to play a video game and it's like, this is the expectations of the game. You're supposed to get these coins or, you know, chase these rabbits around. I don't know. I obviously don't play a lot of video games. This is just the rules. The previous rules of the previous game that you have probably experienced in your lifetime had to do with focus, had to do with skills, had to do with homogeny, had to do with being accepted by others, external validation, external approval, external enemies. It had to do with work. It had to do with building a family. These were things that people just felt like this is what life is about. That's because it was a construct of the game. This is what your soul was experimenting with. And then they were conditioned, meaning that all of their beliefs ran through this filter. So you are releasing those beliefs and you are also allowing the reality to start to take a different shape that it's already slated to take. So the new constructs, I'm not going to get into all of them, think personal expression, individuality, Not to be mistaken with the villainized individualism, individuality, expressing yourself, bringing your own spark. Don't be corn. You know, we already talked about it. Reconstructing. Your body and your desires most likely already know because you're craving it. You're craving something new. You want to hear new music. You want to see new art. You want to show up in the world in a different way. You don't want to work your life away. You want your family to maybe, this isn't for everybody, but you want to see relationships are about intimacy. They're not about commitment for commitment's sake. They are about being known. You want things to be deeper. You don't want to go to crazy, overwhelming social events maybe. You want to have deep one-on-ones with people. If you just really follow what your body and what your desires are really kind of leading you to, you're being led to the new constructs, but then the old constructs show up and you go, oh, there's something wrong with me because I'm not a good worker anymore. Oh, there's something wrong with me because I want my family to look different. So this is a process that takes years to figure out what you, the individual, is meant to bring to this thing. Healing. Now, healing is not meant to be put onto a hamster wheel, as we talked about in Hot Alien Summer. You're not meant to turn healing into some sort of weird obligation, nightmare treadmill that you never get off of, but healing should be naturally happening. You could be going through a phase where you are 
realizing that everyone's taking advantage of you and you kick people out of your life. And then once you're all alone, you realize, oh, wait a second, I maybe could have just set boundaries and this would have been different. And then you go out and you find your people and then you realize people are people. I was looking for people to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Oh, I project. People project. Oh, my nervous system is involved in this. Oh, I can. This should be a natural flowing experience that you do not have to seek out and that you do not have to feel obligated to do. It should be naturally happening for you, but it takes years to have those experiences, experience those mirrors, learn the lesson, think that you're better than that, realize you're not better than that, realize that everyone's capable of everything and open your heart and become more vulnerable and grow your capacity for love and compassion for your fellow man. Sorry, guys, you can't do that in six months after tens of thousands of years of being chaos demons lost in separation consciousness. You need time to learn the art of reframing reality, which comes into the reconstructing, looking at things differently. The old reality told you you weren't doing enough, told you that if something was going wrong, you were being punished. This is karma. It's because you're bad. It's because you're not trying hard enough. The new reality is when I want to experience something, I trust that it will come to me. And when it comes to me, I trust that it's in the right time. If I'm experiencing limitation, I don't tell myself that it's because I'm not thinking positively enough. I take the limitation in and I experience it as a learning opportunity. Many of you may have felt pushed into your homes in the last few years. You may have felt kind of cut off from the external world. The old reality would have you experiencing that as like, I'm missing everything or I'm doing something wrong or I'm not trying hard enough. The new reality says, no, we're going inward. And the reality is guiding me inward. So I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity. Getting to know yourself, getting to know what you want. Many of you are describing the void as loneliness and being alone. And for many of you, you are alone. However you are spending your 10 years or whatever portion of 10 years in the liminal lobby is how your soul wanted to experience it. Just like your soul decided how it wanted to wake up, some of you were like, I would like to wake up gently. I would like to be born to awake parents and integrate this over my lifetime. Some of you were like, I would like to drop acid and then get put in the mental institution the next day when I stood up naked on my desk and, you know, screamed that Alex Jones was right. Whatever it is, whatever your path to awakening, very similar, your higher self and your higher self just means the part of you that remembers everything about you. There's nothing super woo or mystical about that. It's just there's a part of you that, you know, is sitting somewhere in a room with some VR goggles on and, and knows everything that's up and thinks all the things you're really upset about are funny. That version of you chose the best way for you to spend your 10-ish years in the liminal lobby. You don't have to fight it. This is liminal. liminal. It's just an in-between. You're just processing, debriefing, regrouping so that you can go out and play the new game as a consciously aware version of yourself. And you don't have to fight it. And you don't have to worry that you're missing something. You're going to probably live long. The people who live through this are going to live longer. You don't, you don't have to be like, oh, I spent my 30s in there. Oh, I spent my 40s. Don't worry. You're, it's fine. There's nothing going on out there anyway. I, it's, it's, it's a mess out there because it's it, the whole thing. The entire thing is in this liminal lobby. Even those that aren't experiencing healing, they are. It just doesn't look the same for everybody. Don't worry about it. We're going to have time to do the new thing. There's this kind of revving at the starting line feeling that people have. I want to do something. I want to I do all these things, but I can't. And it's because it's not time. The new thing is very trusting and flow. Let life, it's receptive. Let life reveal things to you. Let life bring things to you. But you got to get your shit together first. It's a completely different game. You have to learn how to work the tech of your body. Your body is going to run on a different type of fuel. It's going to need a whole different set of things to, to 
operate all of the features that you weren't using in the old game. Your diet's probably going to have to change. That's not pressure. You don't have to apply that weird shit from your old reality of I'm not doing it right. This will come to you when it's time. Your relationship with sleep, your relationship with food, your relationship with the sun, your relationship with the earth, it's all going to shift. When it's time, it will come to you synchronistically. You don't have to make it fucking weird. When it's time, and this might come through some sort of sickness, you might get sick, your, might, your, your energy might plummet, you might deal with some sort of chronic something, and in your path to healing, you realize like, oh, my body actually has its own thing, and nobody's two things are the same. So don't even, when you figure it out, feel like you need to evangelize to everybody that everybody needs to dunk in a vat of cold water or fast or whatever. And that's what you're figuring out in the liminal lobby. And figuring out is even too aggressive of a word. That's what's coming to you in the liminal lobby. That's what the algorithm is bringing to you. You can't fuck this process up. You can't fuck it up. It just is. You're just being transitioned to a new way of being. And it takes a minute. Learning how your body operates, getting to know yourself. This is all part of the process. Your reality is also never going back to what it was before. So if what you're looking for is my life was this kind of busy, secure, you know, false sense of security, defined thing that I ran around like a chicken with my head cut off and I did all these things and I was being externally validated or I was chasing some sort of externalized happiness and all that's happened so far to me in the liminal lobby is I've realized time and time again that there is no happiness outside of myself. You're never going back to that. That's over. That's done. That's why everything feels like the credits are rolling. You are being transformed, transmuted into something that will fit in a new reality that everyone will individually experience collectively. Collectively is not even the right word. Everyone will individually, decentralizedly, collectively, whatever. It's fine. You'll get it soon. You're not going back to that. So part of the reason that you may feel stuck, quote unquote stuck, is because there are aspects of you that are still echoing the old reality and you feel like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not being seen. I'm not being defined by other people. I'm not being perceived by other people. All of the external validation will crumble hard and fast in the next few years. You will see celebrity culture just take a nosedive that's already happening. You will find in yourself your desire to be validated by people outside of you will greatly diminish over the next few years if it hasn't been already. The thing that we are going into is about personal expression for personal expression's sake, showing up as yourself with your gifts, and that does ultimately serve the collective, but serving the collective will not be about getting pats on the back for being good. We won't be looking to define everything as good or bad. We won't be looking through the lens of separation consciousness much longer. We'll be looking through the lens of ecosystem consciousness. And this will just be a knowing in your body how to show up and how to be. All that is on your plate right now is learning to get in touch with that. One of the most confusing aspects of this is the powering down of the mind as anything relevant in the identity or decision-making process. The reality that you're coming out of was heavily focused on the consciousness of the mind, the awareness center of the mind and the ego. And that was by design. It was to see what happens if those are the awareness centers that we're working with. The mind is not designed to make decisions. The mind as a guidance system, as a navigation system, is like, have you ever had a job where you were very skilled because you'd been there for a very long time? 
but then like the owner hired their son straight out of college and they had no skills in the thing and no passion about the thing and really didn't belong there, but they went to college or, you know, they inherited the business or whatever. this would happen in the restaurant business for my avatar a lot. Like you would have these servers who've been serving since they were teenagers and they were very good at their job. And then some kid who just finished college for hospitality, but never actually waited on a table in their life comes in and they don't know how to be a, they don't, first of all, they're not leaders are just, that's a personality type. A leader is a personality type. It's not, you can't educate someone to be a leader. It's just a vibe that some people have. It is the design of, of their, and they're typically not the same people that necessarily get degrees for stuff. So you got this hospitality degree, which does not tell you when is the right time to advise someone or what is how to lead people. So you end up with this boss who just like feels weird because they know they're not cut out for the job. So then they overcompensate and then they micromanage, you know, and then you just kind of want to shove them into the dishwasher and get them out of your way because they're telling you to do things that you've already done. And then they're trying to seem relevant. So they're like, we need to have a meeting. And it's like, we really don't need to have a meeting. This is the fucking golden corral. I don't need need to, you know, to have a fucking meeting about this job. So this, this is what the mind is. The mind is a terrible guidance system. The guidance system for you is inside of your body. It's inside of your aura. It's a feeling. It's a knowing. And you've been cut off from that because you've had lifetime after lifetime after lifetime in this weirdo experiment in which we have used the mind and the ego as the guidance system. So the mind wants to seem relevant, but it's not a guidance system. It is a number cruncher. It is a calculator. It is the mind is for making your shopping list. The mind is not for determining the right way to show up for your energy. The mind is deeply programmable. The mind picks up all kinds of data from everybody else. It can't say like, is this the right thing for me to do? Is this the right moment? The mind is not capable of intimacy or vulnerability. It's just a little busy. And it's been running things. And look what we got. Look what we got. We got a a bunch of strip malls. Got a bunch of shit that looks the same as the other shit. And it's not cool anymore. The, enough of the very left brain's lack of creativity. We're, we're, we did that. The mind will continue to exist and you will be able to use it for mind things. There are, there are purposes for the mind, but it will not be your guidance system moving forward. But many of you are currently in the queue, currently in the uh, queue, like waiting in the queue, not like <clears throat> pizza gate or whatever. Many of you, some of you might be, I hope, anyway, many of you are experiencing panic. Many of you are experiencing morbid fantasies. And the morbid fantasies are defined as, what if this happens? Well, what if this happens? I need to have a plan because I have to figure out. I got to figure things out. I got to, we're feeling things out now. We're not figuring things out anymore. And the reason that you're having these morbid fantasies and you're time traveling to the future repeatedly is because the mind is like, the mind is like when you went to a dentist office a few times and then now you're not going to the dentist office anymore and it keeps sending you emails and it's like, we missed you. We, mi we miss you. here. Happy birthday. We miss you here. Hey, by the way, gingivitis kills 600,000 people a year. Hey, hey, by the way, the, de we, the dentist really helps your life. We... We are not even entertaining the idea that you got a different dentist. We just think you're ignoring your teeth. Hey, hi, that's your mind. That's your mind right now while you sit in the, it's supposed to be powering down, but if you're letting it just run its mouth, it's going to convince you, you need to go do something. You need to get busy. You need to, need to get on something. The mind is bored. The mind is being demoted. In the best possible way, the mind will eventually settle down, but that can be a little confusing. Some of you may be confused about that. 
The other confusing part is that the reality that you have lived in has been, this is, I don't know if I've said this already, has been an externalized reality. So the, the majority of your experience was outside of you. The majority of your experience moving forward will be inside of you, and that will increase as time goes on. An example of that is most of your life was work, socializing, stimuli, whatever, and now you find yourself spending more time contemplating, exploring ideas. You're more attracted to things that bring you the ability to do that. You want more time by yourself. It's internalized. And eventually the internalized reality will turn into what you would now consider magic. You would now consider magic because you will eventually reach a point where your internal experience is fully powered on. You are fully in your power. You are fully a creator. Again, you are always were a creator. You've just been having uh, a limited experience for the sake of having a limited experience, when you tap back into that, you won't have to physically make a thing. You will create it with your consciousness from your internal experience. But there's a whole lot of contemplation and internal reality that has to happen to get to that point. So something that is confusing is some people may feel I've been trapped in my house by myself. No, you're going inward. You're going inward and this will start to make more sense. Doesn't mean you're never going to do something outside, but all the answers won't be outside. They won't be mental. This will make a lot of sense. In the course of the next five years, you're going to have a lot of like, oh, fuck. Yeah, duh. A lot of aha moments. 2024 will be the beginning of birth energy for some of you. Not all of you. And this is not a contest, and this is not a hierarchy. There was hierarchies in the old reality. There's not hierarchies in this. There is something that you would maybe frame as a hierarchy because you don't understand it. But there is just, you are the spark of energy in the big spinning ball that is you, and you don't have, you're not competing with the other sparks of energy, and no one is the boss of you, and no one tells you how your energy should work. So don't worry about it. If some people are in birth energy and you are not in birth energy, you'll get there. You are doing this at the exact schedule you wanted to do it. Many of you will finally feel like you are able to move across the starting line creatively. You will begin to make art that is unlike any art. New mediums will be created. New genres will be created. People will begin to have fun with the new tech. Music will begin to sound different. We are beginning to move into birth energy. Does it mean there isn't still death energy? Just imagine that there is like a hill of the 10 years. We are at the top of the hill right now. Things will get wacky. I'm saying that and I'm trying to say that in the nicest way possible. The reality will continue to get bananas for a bit. But many of you as individuals will begin to birth forth your early creative energy. And you will find that you care less and less about other people's consumption of it. And brilliant artists will birth things forth and people will feel less compelled to deify them because of it or worship at the feet of the artist. People will start to realize they are all artists, that they are all creative beings. The next few years is going to be very empowering as people move forward into this, people will feel less in the queue. They will feel less stuck in the liminal lobby as they begin to express, but you will still be in the liminal lobby, just kind of on training wheels for the next few years. And to remind you, none of this matters. It could not matter less. There are no stakes. This is not a race. This is just fucking around for infinity. That's it, I guess. Anyway, there are other podcasts that are not from an alien, but if you want a deeper dive on this, there I'm just putting stuff on Patreon. There's a free Patreon where I've just done a couple free episodes and I post some thoughts and some downloads and stuff. $5 tier, there's years worth of podcasts on there and two more podcasts every month. $10 tier, 
is a bunch of other shit, live streams and stuff. But at, at the minimum, I recommend the free tier just because it's an easy place for me to put stuff and kind of have this quiet community that I feel comfortable with right now. We'll see what happens in 2024. I too feel like I'm leaving the starting line. The opening song and the closing song are both uh, from Suitnop, spelled S-U-I-T-N-O-P. That's Pontius spelled backwards because it's Mark Pontius's music. The opening song is called Five Windows, and that is available on Spotify. It will be available on other platforms soon. The closing song is called Hinterland, and that will be released on February 4th as part of a full album. And you can, I don't know, go follow on Spotify or something if you want to get that. I'm sure I'll talk about it here. I sometimes do sessions. I don't know. I don't currently have them up on my website. I might put them back on my website soon. If you really feel like you need one, you can send me an email and I will send you a link. I believe that's it. <laughs>